Salawam, Ubuntu, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Ha'arakah, Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone, all well, and Shalawam to the whole four elect. This video um, is going to be based upon um, the hot topic right now, being around the gold and the silver, all right, Apostar boy. it. I believe into the from what I know into you know into conversation and um I just wanted to just hit on some key points as you know um it tells you in the book of Ecclesiastes the third chapter to every um to every um time there is a season and under the and every and to every time there's a purpose under heaven all right so being that hey, we're in a moment of time there's a purpose for us being in a moment of time. And ultimately being the prophets of Yahweh, Ba'asham El Shai, Ba'asham Harakar, Kwadash, we're here to, to prophesy the downfall of this kingdom. But also, you know, being the, the fishers of Yahweh Shai, we're going to be turned into the hunters, all right? And being turned into the hunters, it will be done when Esau makes his move. When he comes in as a flood, the Most High is going to raise up a standard against him. Now, in saying that, the Lord has gave us, you know, tools, resources to utilize, starting with the wisdom, all right, to implement, um, you know, to maneuver out of out of the way of um, the downfall of this kingdom, all right, and getting caught in, up in judgment, all right. If the Lord told you a building's going to fall down tomorrow, are you going to walk into that building and say, the Lord's got me? And let it fall down with you and fall down with it. No, you're not. You're gonna you need a space, you know, move away from it as far as possible to avoid being caught up in that judgment. Alright. And um there's said things that are happening now, key moments within the time that we're in, that basically, you know, we taking heed, we, we you know, using wisdom, we see it and we we work with them, alright? But we give room for the spirit to take to do to do his thing as well, you know. So, without further ado, I get into this lesson. I want to grab some scripture before I do so. I just want to show some news about what's happening. So, it's a gold price is set to smash record as Wall Street shuns the dollar. Right, a lot of people basically investing in gold right now. Whoops, I need to go there. A lot of people investing in gold. Keeps going. So, uh, gold eases from new 1,980 record of dollar lifts ahead of Fed meeting as it happens. So you can see a lot more people investing in gold, right? Um, Gold hits record highs, investors just spread. So it's like it's infectious, a lot of people investing in it. But then the same thing is being can be said with silver, right? So silver had a cracking run, what happens now? Right, so it's saying silver's you know been on it a hundred percent increase since March. Alright, so that's where we're at with it. But I'm gonna jump into these scriptures. And Lord willing you be edified, okay? So this is Genesis 13 and 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Okay, so what denoted wealth was was this. I'll read it again. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So that's what denoted wealth. Riches, okay. Cattle, silver, and gold. All right. And that's why it spoke of um, in the book of Job. That he was rich and he had great substance. And there was no man like him in the east. And why was that? It's because he had an abundance of cattle. Different forms of livestock basically. And obviously that goes hand in hand with having silver and gold. And many other resources at your disposal. Okay. So um, yeah. That's, that's wealth. That's true money. Okay. And don't speak about paper money and fiat currency. Which... If you understand the history of money, you understand how money has been changed over from um, precious metals into paper, 
which was before receipt of the holdings of your gold and silver, which was turned into a just paper representation of money that is not pinned to nothing, okay? That can be printed at will and inflate the value of things upon this earth. So anyway, I want to give an example and, and the only one I'm saying that is because uh, this paper money is not money, all right? Gold and silver is true wealth, okay? Which is actually the spiritual money, man, all right? In the fourth dimension, you have 24 king um, elders sat before the throne of Yahweh, where Yahweh Shai sat on the right hand side, throwing their gold crowns before his throne, okay? So there was gold in the fourth dimension, okay? In in a dimension that we cannot see, it's beyond us, but it's the spiritual realm. They're throwing gold before the the, the seat of Yahweh, of Yahweh, okay? So um, let me keep this moving. I'm gonna give this parable because it's really, you know, with the whole thing with the gold, it's more of a thing where. This don't mean that you should get your paycheck tomorrow and just buy gold and then go down to your corner shop and then try and buy things with gold or silver and whatnot. This is more, you know, a hedge in times to come, you know, because what? Yeah, it's King Solomon said it in Ecclesiastes' first, third chapter, that every time there's a purpose, all right, under the sun, us being again in a time there's a purpose for these things, right? There's a reason why we're privy to this information. And but to utilize it accordingly. So this is Luke 16 and 1. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. And the same was accused on, unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship for thou mayest be no longer a steward, no longer steward. Then the steward said unto himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me um, the stewardship. He's, he's taken away his job. I cannot dig, can't do manual labor. And it says, To beg, I am ashamed. And he said, He can't deliver life of a beggar. Verse 4 I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of my stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he said, look, aha, eureka moment. He said, I know what I'm going to do. Verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debits, uh, debtors unto him and said unto the first, how much owest thou unto my Lord? All right. And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said like, yo, I owe him a hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, take that bill. Take take the you know the invoice, all right. The statement of your your of that that debt, and sit down quickly and write fifty. So he said rewrite it down to fifty, and obviously him being a mediator between you know the Lord and you know his his, his, um, his accounts, he's the one that keeps a, a, a sure right over it. He he can allow it to pass and let it fly, all right. Verse seven. Then said he to another, and how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, unto him, take thy bill and write four score. So he said, write down 80 instead. Right, because the score is 20, and four times 20 is 80. So um, reading on it says eight. The Lord, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children, he said he had done wisely all right now that's the point for the children of this world are in a generation wiser than the children of light and it's true all right there's a, there's a I recently watched one um interview of the wall street trapper which he calls himself jake from new orleans that basically was talking about how he got into stock trading um got into trading basically and he said he was in prison and he come across a a white collar criminal that basically has stole something like 2.8 million. I, I'm not familiar with the laws, but apparently he just paid 800,000 to uh, the law and then managed to keep the other two M's to himself. 
So the 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 point of the story or the the main phrase from the story was you, you're playing the wrong game. So this so called white man was telling this Jake that you know you're wasting time doing all that armed robbery you're sitting here for ten years. By the time you're still here in the jail cell, I'm gonna go out, get another five million, come down here, sit down for three years, and then my family straight for good. You know, we ain't got to think about nothing. We can clean up all that money. Right? And then me saying that, I have to repeat this again here. It says, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, what does that mean? It says, the children of this world, the children of this world, Esau, Edom, all right? This is their world, this, all right? And they're the children of this world. And it says, are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Ecclesiastes 3 To every season There's a There's a Let me quickly read it Because I always butcher it man. Uh, To everything There is a season And a time To every purpose Under heaven We're in the time Of the wicked Okay So Obviously It makes sense That the wicked Would be In their generation Wiser than the children Of light Because why because they're in the way of wickedness, right? So it says, um, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And their, their knowledge of utilizing the money system which they divisively set up is them using, implementing that wisdom, right? And having a leg up over us, Jake. Verse nine, and I say unto you, make, to, now these, I'm going to pick out the key points and the reason why I, re I read this. And I say unto you, make yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. So the Lord said it, didn't he say sell out. He said make yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Right? And that's the point. That when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Alright? So basically... When you when you you're at a disadvantage, those networks of friends that you have, and what you've established within the, the mammon of unrighteousness, will allow you to to stay in everlasting habitations. And why is he said? Because the Lord, even though the Lord said, "Fox saves holes and the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head," he actually had a place. He technically always had a place to rest his head. He was always taken care of. And what I mean by that is that he never want from he never you know wanted of of anything. He was able to carry forward his uh, ministry without no formal issue. And that's the same with us. When you have these, hey man, I just went through a a, a change in changes within my my uh, my life in Clark Kent mode, and they they had a. Um, they had created mitigating factors within my spiritual life, man. All right, as to where you know I couldn't do certain things because of these things. All right, and that's the reason why you'd really want to set yourself up to receive the, uh, that you may that may receive you into everlasting habitations. That when you fail, that they, they may receive you into everlasting habitations, because basically. These are a surety in your time of need, all right? To spare you of those moments. Okay, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in, in much, right? So the Lord gives you little. When you're faithful in that little, when he gives you a, an abundance, you're going to be faithful in that abundance. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And a good example of that is Esau, man. Esau's got much and he's just un unjust and so if you give him little he would have been unjust with that anyway if therefore ye have not been faithful in an unrighteous if therefore ye have not been faithful in an unrighteous mammon he will commit to your trust the true riches and this is back playing upon what the unjust steward did All right, even though he, he established himself everlasting habitations of, righteous, of, um, of mammon unrighteous mammon basically he had he had a, a smear on his name right which the lord basically saying look man just do righteous dealings at all times all right 
the golden rule. Treat treat uh, your brother as, as you would like to be treated. Verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is uh, your own? All right? So, like, if you can't take care of another man's, how are you going to take care of your own? All right? Again, the golden rule. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve Yahweh and, and Mammon. So, basically, the Lord nipped that all in the bud that said, Look, if you're going to serve the Most High, you're going to serve the Most High. If you're going to serve Mammon, you're going to serve Mammon. If they, whatever your desire is, that's what you're going to wind up serving, more or less. So, what you got to glean from this is that there's a need for unrighteous mammon. But basically, it's not to supersede the need of Yahweh Hashem and Hashem. Alright? So, I want to end on this scripture. Uh, this is uh, Proverbs 30. And... Um, Uh, and eight and seven, so eight and seven. All right. So this is Proverbs thirty seven and eight. Two things have I required of thee: deny me them, not before I die. All right. Remove far from me the vanity of lies. All right. Now this is the point. Give me me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Alright? And it reads. So he's going to elaborate on why he said so. Least I be full and deny thee. And say who is the Lord. Because pride, you know, will puff him up and make him believe that. You know, you don't need the Lord because he's got all this wealth. He has the comfort of the wealth. And he can do as he pleases. So he thinks, what, what, what do I need the most out for? Or at least I be pure, poor and still and take the name of Yahweh in vain. All right. On the first point I read before I get a breakdown, a good example is that uh, Paul, when he had the fawn in his side, what did the Lord do? He asked him to take the, you know, the fawn out of his side and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Because when you're, when basically saying like when, when a man is weak, his faith is strong because why you you have to rely on the heavenly father as your crutch to get you through these situations all right i said or at least i be poor and still and take the name of my power in vain all right and basically by taking the, the name of the power in vain by basically um doing all those things and being a misrepresentation of the lord because it, it'll be like what well, the lord can't even give you these little things bread to eat when he spoke of that in the book of Matthews, man, he said, "Take no, where's your life? Take no care of it, man." He said, "A sparrow won't die, at least the Lord, the Most High, ordain it, and you, and we are more precious than sparrows. So the Lord's always gonna take care of us. But if you're poor, you can, and stealing all that, hey, it's gonna you're gonna make the Most High look like you can't take care of you. He's he's trusted servants, man. All right." So, you know, that being the point that, you know, Isaiah 33 and 6 tells you, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and the strength of thy salvation. A part of that is, you know, utilizing these, these unrighteous mammon to be basically as a tool to allow you to, to maintain and do the things that you need to do uh, for the work of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Right. So with that, man, I pray you're edified. Shalom.